truth was in his mouth, no dishonesty was found on his lips. He walked with me in integrity and peace, and turned many away from evil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today we celebrate at the memorial of uh, St. Irenaeus, a bishop and martyr of the church, and one of the uh, church fathers. And as we gather, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves as we celebrate in these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who called the bishop, St. Irenaeus, to confirm true doctrine and the peace of the church, Grant, we pray through his intercession, that being, rena being renewed in faith and charity, we may always be intent on fostering unity and concord. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Hear this word, O children of Israel, that the Lord pronounces over you, over the whole family that I brought up from the land of Egypt. You alone have I favored more than all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your crimes. Do two walk together unless they have agreed? Does a lion roar in the forest when it has no prey? Does a young lion cry out from its den unless it has seized something? Is a bird brought to earth by a snare when there is no lure for it? Does a snare spring up from the ground without catching anything? If the trumpet sounds in a city, will the people not be frightened? If evil befalls a city, has not the Lord caused it. Indeed, the Lord God does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. The lion roars, who will not be afraid? The Lord God speaks, who will not prophesy? I brought upon you such upheaval as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, you were like a brand plucked from the fire. Yet you return not to me, says the Lord. So now I will deal with you in my own way, O Israel, and since I will deal thus with you, prepare to meet your God, O Israel. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Lead me in your justice, Lord. Be in your justice, Lord. At dawn I bring my plea expectantly before you. For you, O God, delight not in wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. You hate all evildoers. You destroy all who speak falsehood. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful the Lord abhors. But I, because of your abundant mercy, will enter your house. I will worship at your holy temple in fear of you, O Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus got into a boat, his disciples followed him. Suddenly a violent storm came up on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by waves, but he was asleep. They came and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. He said to them, Why are you terrified, O you of little faith? Then he got up, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was great calm. The men were amazed and said, What sort of man is this, whom even the winds and the sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. When I go home, oftentimes I will go and spend some time at my sister's house. And uh, what frequently ends up happening is that we'll, we'll end up playing card games or board games or something like that. It's, it's something that's always been a big part of our, our family gatherings, our family traditions. And so pretty, pretty, much, pretty much all the time when I go home and, and visit family, that's what we'll end up doing at some point. And what will, what will happen frequently is that as we're playing whatever game we're playing around the kitchen table, one of my, one of my sister's little children, you know, like five and under, will kind of wander by and say, well, I want to play. <laughs> and so as we're kind, of, we're kind of looking at each other like, well, this is really kind of a little too complicated for you. But usually one of us will say th- something like, oh, okay, well, well, why don't you come and play on my team? Okay, you, you can sit with me and you can, you know, we'll let them like roll the dice for us or something or, or like if we're playing cards, we'll be like, okay, like play this card now, you know, we'll kind of give it to them let, and just kind of let them uh, sit with us and, and experience that. And the reality is that, as, as, as I'm reflecting on this, the reality is that eventually with time, those kids will, will grow older and they'll get to the point where they can sort of play the game for themselves. They'll get old enough to, to understand what's going on and they'll be able to, to participate on their own. Uh, like, you know, some of my sister's older kids have done. You know, her, her oldest two sons are at the point now where they're, you know, able to play pretty much any game that we're playing and, and get pretty good and even win sometimes. Um, and it's not, and that's certainly, it's certainly not a, a bad thing. I don't, I don't mind at all that they, you know, want to come in and the little ones want to come and sit and just kind of participate and they want to, um, you know, just kind of roll the dice and just just be kids, you know, just just let us love them. But I certainly look at it as, you know, a good thing that eventually those children will grow and mature and be able to to really appreciate the game that we're playing for what it is. And to be able to kind of share in that with us, that now I can, you know, we can sort of, as grown-up people, sort of, we can share the joy of, of, you know, playing this game together. And I would pray that, I would pray that that extends uh, over the course of their lives to, to all aspects of life. You know, that, you know, I love my, I love my nieces and nephews very much. And so I, I pray that as they grow older, that I would be able to share more and more with them, that as they do eventually become adults that we would be able to have those sort of more more deep mature conversations and that you know that I would be able really to share the depth of my own experience to to have a real authentic relationship and authentic friendship with them even though you know they're just little kids now but someday they'll be adults and I I thank God for the opportunity that I will one day have to really to enter into a deeper relationship with them. And I'm thinking about that today because our first reading really presents us with a challenging concept, a challenging mystery in our faith that the Lord can love us deeply and infinitely and also punish us for our sins, punish us for our offenses. He can love us intimately and deeply and because of that love, because of that infinite love, that he would still allow us 
to suffer the just penalty for the wrongs that we do. We see this as, as in the way that he interacts with the people of Israel and how, but we also sort of, we also experience that in our own lives. We also experience uh, the consequences of sin in our own lives. And the reality is this, God loves us so much that he wants to give us the best thing he can possibly give us. He will not settle for anything less. And the reality is that because he's God, the best thing that he can give us, the greatest gift he can give to his children is not created things. It's not finite goods. The best thing that God can give us, that he wants to give us, is his very self, is the divine essence, the infinite love and being of God poured into our hearts. That is the thing that God wants to give to each of us more than anything. And what that means, because the, and the other side of that is that God cannot give us himself truly without at the same time making us more like himself. That's the reality. It's impossible that we could receive God more deeply into our hearts, that we could truly enter into communion with him without becoming more like him. That's how God is. That's how he works. He can't enter into our hearts without changing us, without transforming us. It's what we call, in the, in the Christian life, we call this divinization, or theosis, if you will, in Greek, that God wants us, he loves us so much that he wants us to be like him. And so, if God didn't love us this way, he could settle for not allowing us to be truly just as he is. But because he wants us to be fully grown and mature in our faith and in our love of him, he has to let us see the justice that underlies all of his actions. Because God is both merciful and just. God is ultimate justice. And so he cannot give us himself. He cannot truly abide in our hearts if we ourselves do not learn and internalize the justice of God. His mercy, yes, but also his justice. We have both of these sort of held in tension in our lives. God doesn't, he doesn't punish our sins for his own sense of satisfaction, like, oh, those people are going to get it now. You know, they really messed up this time. I'm going to give it to them. No, he gives us that justice. He, allow, he allows us to experience the consequences of our sins so that we will learn to know and to love the justice that God is, so that we will understand who he is and how he acts in our lives. He wants us to take his yoke upon him, to take his thoughts and his desires into our own hearts so that we would love truly what he loves and not other lesser created things. And so, but the, the rest of the story, the rest of the story is what we get from the gospel, which is that in the incarnation, Christ, God gets into the boat with us. He doesn't say, okay, I'm going to let you figure it out on your own. I'm going to let you bear this burden without me helping you. God has so radically united himself to us that he is in the boat with us through all of these sufferings and the little daily deaths that we experience. He goes through all of that with us, in us, through us, so that we can eventually come to know him, to love him better, and fulfill our vocation one day to be to truly be saints.
and seeking the Lord's justice in our own lives, that we may grow more like him to receive more of him. We seek the intercession of St. Irenaeus this morning for our petitions and our prayers. We pray for our church, that she may be a beacon of life and light to the world, protect the dignity of all human life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, uh, for uh, peace and solace and, and serenity in the hearts of all people, especially uh, those in our community and our families. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, uh, that we may learn from our actions, from our past sins, and God may give us the grace to overcome the sins that we struggle with. We pray to the Lord. And through the intercession of uh, St. Irenaeus, we pray for all those uh, catechists and teachers, theologians who are called to pass on the faith uh, through teaching. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, uh, for all missionaries and those who have given their life uh, to serving those in remote areas, to spreading the gospel, for their safety, for their zeal and courage. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon our diocese and for the uh, vocations of all of our young people, especially those who are discerning um, religious life or the priesthood for our diocese. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, uh, for all those uh, who lead us in civil uh, government, that God may soften their hearts to the truth and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have died and for the intention of this Mass and for all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. O just and merciful God, we turn to you as your children. Help us to come, become more like you in all that we do through our faith, hope, and love that we receive, may receive all of who you are as we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, and the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the of the church. May the sacrifice we offer you with joy, 
on the heavenly birthday of St. Irenaeus. <clears throat> bring, you <clears throat> bring you glory, O Lord, and instill in us a love of the truth, so that we may keep the church's faith inviolate and her unity secure. Through Christ our Lord. Be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance you grant firm resolve, and in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that, that, at, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, 
by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Irenaeus, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. That our Savior's command informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me and I in him bears fruit in plenty.
Let us pray. Through these sacred mysteries, we pray, O Lord, give us your compassion, an increase of that faith which brought glory to the bishop, St. Irenaeus, as he maintained it even unto death, and may that same faith bring to us who truly follow it justification in your sight through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. And have a wonderful day today.